Welcome back to another video. Once again, I am Jason Goyette, the owner of Future Tech Ideas. And uh, today we're going to be talking about something that's been in the news lately. And that is the major violence that's erupting all over Egypt and the Middle East in general. Um, I predict that there's going to be a lot more. Um, that's my personal opinion. But uh, it looks like it's starting with Egypt and it's not looking good, guys. Um, the, the death toll amounts are ranging, like going from, you know, 400 to 600 to 200, um, 3,000 injured possibly. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood says that 600 have been killed. Um, uh, I've been watching videos and reading articles uh, for about two hours now and looking at all the stuff and then going back and looking at other articles as well um, to see what's happening here in the United States and come to find out the Dow drops 200 points. Uh, now, what's very interesting is a lot of times when there's a lot of stuff happening over overseas, um, that that news gets covered a lot, and then all of a sudden they sneak in a little bit of uh, news that all of a sudden comes in, and all of a sudden we hear, oh, the Dow drops 200, or oh, there's a big explosion in Texas, or something like that, just for just for uh, an example. Like they bring in like certain little pieces of of news that happen here at home. That's very big news. But yet it gets overshadowed by all the stuff that happens overseas. Now, I'm not saying that the stuff that's happening in Egypt is something to be concerned about. I'm just saying watch both hands, okay? Because when the right hand is doing something, you know, the left hand can be doing something too. So we need to watch what's happening on both sides and not just pay attention to one, uh, one country. Um, so like I said, the casualty fi uh, figures, uh, they vary widely. Um, the, the police raided uh, more of these supporters, uh, Morsi supporter camps um, and the Morsi supporters now they, they're taking the streets basically uh, they don't have their camps no more so they're on the streets uh, mass shootings everywhere um, riots protests people dying like I said close to uh, around 600 to 400 like I said it's it's hard to tell with with the news coming out of Egypt on exactly the uh, the death the death toll and the uh, the injuries but there's injuries on both sides but the one thing is to is to realize is <laughs> The security force and the army has a lesser amount of deaths and uh, injuries than the uh, protesters do. Um, uh, let's see here. Yep. Like I said, the battle is just is just piling up in Egypt. It's just uh, one one thing you know. There's a big shooting over here, and then right after that, the people that you know get killed and they get sent off in, in cars. Literally, they get sent off in cars. I mean, there's cars racing by, reporters uh, piled full of dead people and injured people. Uh, honking the horns, you know, there's no no way to get to to the hospital. They got to take people in cars and stuff, even if they're dead. You know, you could be injured and you could be laying next to a dead person. Um, it's just it's tragic. It's heartbreaking uh, for each side. Um, don't get me wrong, for each side, everyone that dies, that is a living life. That is a living person who his life or her life has ended. Now. I mean, I, I don't I don't just say, you know, oh, I have more compassion for this person because, you know, they, they support him or they support this this cause. I have compassion for every living life that passes away. Um, I'm kind of different in that way where I don't have feel bad for one person over the other. Um, they all died. They all had a life. They all had a future. Now that future is gone. So uh uh, share your compassion and, and, and concern and and feelings for each life that has died. Um, that's how I, I view things. And to see all these people dying, no matter if they're the, the, the security forces, the army forces, or the protesters, it, like I said, it's heartbreaking and it's hard to watch and it's hard to read also. Um, like I said, the cars are racing up, racing up and down the streets carrying dead people. And imagine that if that happened here in, in the United States. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine that happening. Now, I know there are some places around the United States that does have bad, you know, really bad places, but I don't think there's cars piled with dead people uh, and wounded, you know, taking them to the hospital. Now, get this, one of the hospitals there, uh, one of the local hospitals were actually evacuated. All the volunteers were evacuated by security forces with guns. Um, they were told to leave the patients and the dead and get out of the, get out of the hospital. 
Uh, the doctors were told to leave injured and were pushed out at, of the hospital at gunpoint. Um, now, a lot of, a lot of the uh, doctors that were volunteers, um, and, and a doctor's priority is the patient, is if somebody's hurt, you take care of them. And being ordered to, to say, no, don't do your job, no, don't do what you were told and taught all these years, you need to get out and just leave them, that's hard for a doctor to do. No matter if, if you're a, a doctor in, in, you know, Egypt or a doctor in America, Canada, Mexico, wherever, it's hard to leave a, a patient lying on the floor dying or, or injured. Um, so the worst of the gunfight is at the, was at the second camp. Uh, there, I guess there was a, a first camp that they had that they, the security forces and army went in and took out. And then the, there was a second camp that they went and take, uh, took out. Um, that, that was the worst battle, I believe, at the second camp so far. Um, there was reported sniper, uh, sni snipers. There was reported snipers on rooftops. Uh, the, the security forces were using machine guns. Now, I've seen some of the video footage, and there was, you know, like I said, there was snipers on the rooftops. There were security forces using machine guns. But a lot of the protesters were using rocks and their fists and things around them. I didn't see many of the protesters using guns. And that is a hard thing to, to uh, grasp because uh, the government's uh, claiming that, you know, they found gun guns and all this type of stuff in the camps yeah they may have found guns but when i seen the video footage and when i seen stuff you know going on there was there was the security forces and army with freaking guns and 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 transport vehicles and armor and then there was the protesters with rocks and they were claiming the protesters were armed and and armed with what armed with rocks against uh machine guns and snipers and and bulletproof vests now now don't get me wrong like i said i that I, they may have found guns. There was reports of them finding guns at some of the camps. But the way things are going, it doesn't look too good for the protesters. I mean, the security forces and army there, they're definitely not, not what uh, I'm used to seeing because they're basically just shooting and not giving a crap. Not even, not even thinking twice about pulling the trigger on a, a 10 year old armed with a rock you know what i'm saying so i just don't understand it i don't understand why we're not out there helping and trying to calm things down yeah obama's speech is, do the speech and says them orders them to you know or whatever it says you know for them to stop and uh, warns egypt and and you know but we need we have the power to to go out there and help these people but, but then again you got to say do they want the help that's the thing um it's hard to uh hard to help people when they don't want it uh but the way things are going with egypt <clears throat> excuse me i believe <laughs> they're going to need it <clears throat> excuse me mm, i've been talking all day uh so yes the uh but that like i said that's that's a claim that the the civilians were unarmed the civilian protesters were unarmed um like i've seen uh the video and uh, all i see was rocks i did not see weapons um, I've seen weapons from the armed forces, but no weapons from the protesters and civilians. Um, now, let me, the, uh, you know, like I said, the security forces do have dead and wounded, uh, but it's uh, pales in comparison to what the uh, the protesters and civilians have. Um, they have a lot more dead and wounded. Uh, cl some claims are 3,000 injured, and, and uh, by now, it's probably well, well over that. I mean, who knows how many are dead now. But uh, So, yeah, Cairo was the worst to get hit by this. Um, hundreds killed in Cairo. State of emergency imposed, along with a curfew, which is at 1 p.m. A curfew at 1 p.m. In, in Egypt. Imagine that the curfew was here at 1 p.m. every day. That would be pretty hard. Um, guys, I don't know what to tell you. Uh... I don't know if this is a sign of things to come or if this is the beginning of the end. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and refer back to the Bible because um, I know in the Bible it mentions that uprisings will, will happen and uprisings are happening now. I mean, Libya had uprisings, Egypt had uprisings, United States are starting to have protests and uprisings. All around the world this is starting to happen. So I'm beginning to wonder if it's coming to the end uh armageddon's coming or is it just uh just a clashing of of 
people and and uh, civilians clashing with government and uh, the people who think they're above the law, which is security forces and army, police and stuff like that. I do believe they they think they're above the law now. Now, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, no, they did the they did by the book law. They 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 knew the rights. They knew the law uh, written out, but nowadays they're just you know point and shoot and then ask questions later and oh you know we'll go ahead and get paid leave or whatever <laughs> it's kind of kind of alarming to uh, realize where we're heading now so i believe if we don't do anything now if we don't uh, uh hold back the urge to kill which it seems like that's what's happening is people are just wanting to kill you know people are wanting to kill people um, I mean, you look at certain places and, and projects around the United States, people die over over uh, boyfriend and girlfriend issues. Uh, people die over calling each other names. Uh, it, it's alarming because I never felt that, okay? I honestly never felt the urge to kill another human being. I may have felt the urge to to maybe hit them, but I never acted on that urge. I had self-control over that urge. I may have have wanted to, you know, uh, put them in jail, or, or or may have felt the urge for that, but I never acted on it because I have I don't know I don't know if it's just me, guys. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I have a lot of compassion and a lot of feelings, and I have those right on the surface. So whenever I see somebody hurt, or even if it's a you know somebody who's who's uh, obviously breaking the law or obviously doing something they shouldn't. Um, being killed over it, I still have that little bit of hurt in me. I still have that, feel that, com the compassion towards that person being killed or being harmed. Uh, but there is, there is a line where I draw to where I, I draw back that compassion um, when there's, you know, laws being broke, like, or, you know, people killing people for no reason um, and uh, uh, molestations and stuff like that. And then I say, okay, the cops need to go in and do their job. And you need to prosecute this person. Yeah, I'm not going to feel a lot of compassion for that person being prosecuted because he obviously did something extremely horribly wrong. But uh, to kill him for just to, you know, just to kill him, it's like, how can you do that? How can you do that? I could never be in the army. I don't think I could. I could never be a police officer. Although if I was a police officer, I would probably rarely ever fire my gun at a person. Um, if I did, I'd be one heck of a shot because I'd always aim for the legs or the arms, and that's it. I would never just blindly pow, 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 like you see all the time on the damn news. Fire after fire, just blankly everywhere, and just pow, 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 pow. It's like, dude, what if you hit a child, or what if you hit an innocent person in the house? Or, you know, like, what is the sense of that? And if you're trying to apprehend somebody... You don't just pull out your gun. You got a uh, taser there. You know you got other means of of uh, subduing the person. So so uh, use that instead of whipping out a gun and firing ten rounds at in the direction of the person, knowing not knowing if you're going to kill him or kill somebody that's walking next to him or in in the house. You know it's it's completely unnecessary. And hopefully this isn't the beginning of the end. But the way it's looking, it's very scary to think what's coming next. Uh, I can tell you this, I am scared, and uh, I just hope that everyone else there, out there is uh, paying attention to everything that's going on. Like I said, also, 200 points uh, dropping in the Dow, that's not big news, but that is big news to uh, our economy and big news to what could be possibly uh, happening in the future for the United States. Uh, I think the Dow has been dropping like that, like over a period of time. It goes up. And then it drops dramatically. It goes up, and then it drops dramatically. And that obviously proves, you know, that we're not on our game. The the, the economy, the government, the uh, whatever you want to call it, is not doing its job right. And we we just got to get on our game. Two hundred twenty five points it dropped, and it's not moving up yet. Um, it's pretty scary to to realize or what could be happening after this. Uh, yeah, it's biggest drop in two months. So I wonder, I wonder if there was a big event that happened two months ago that was widely covered by the news, by the media. Because um, that's what I usually find is a big event happens around the world. The media grabs onto it and plasters it everywhere. 
and then all of a sudden they sneak in a little bit, a little article stating, you know, something happened in the United States or, or the Dow dropped or, or something happened that is, could be impact us pretty dramatically, but they don't cover it wide enough. They just say, oh, yeah, this happened, and then let's move on to uh, the shootings over here. Yeah, there's people dying, but also, you know, you're kind of covering up and putting it, putting it on the back burner of what's happening here at home. And that's what I think they realize. I think the government and and the media has realized, you know, we could we could blow up this one thing and then allow this big thing to sneak in and nobody really notice it. So I'll provide the link for the uh, Dow drop 225 points, and I'll also provide a link in the description for the uh, the Egypt uh, crisis that's going on. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll have to take a look at it. Uh, in a couple of days and see see how it's going and see if we get more figures on the death toll and the exact uh, stuff that's happening over there. But like I said, it's not looking too good for our future, uh, world, world's, the world's future in general, not just United States future. I'm talking about everybody because uh, stuff like this affects everybody. Um, so don't forget to tune in on Saturday at 9 p.m. We're going to be broadcasting live on the Future Tech Ideas uh, YouTube channel, uh, the channel you're watching now, uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're going to be covering current events. Uh, we will not be covering this event. That's why I'm doing this video, actually, because uh, this is kind of big news. It, it needs attention, so I'm doing this video uh, separate from the live event. So hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed uh, enjoyed this video. I know it's bad news, but uh, hopefully you find some education to it and find some, uh, some good points in it. Um, some of the stuff I mentioned is my own opinions, but most of it is based on facts provided by uh, YouTube and CNN and all these articles and videos that are everywhere uh, going around the internet. Um, but make sure to check out those links below. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully uh, you guys have a good day, good night, or good morning, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for watching. By the way, say some prayers for Egypt. articles uh, for about two hours now and looking at all the stuff and then going back and looking at other articles as well um, to see what's happening here in the United States and come to find out the Dow drops 200 points. Uh, now what's very interesting is a lot of times when there's a lot of stuff happening over overseas um, that that news gets covered a lot and then all of a sudden they sneak in a little bit of uh, news that all of a sudden comes in and all of a sudden we hear oh the Dow Welcome back to another video. Once again, I am Jason Goyette, the owner of Future Tech Ideas. And uh, today we're going to be talking about something that's been in the news lately. And that is the major violence that I'll just pay attention to one, uh, one country. Um, so like I said, the casualty fi uh, figures, uh, they vary widely. Um, the, the police raided uh, Morsi supporters, uh, Morsi supporter camps. Um, and the Morsi supporters, now they, they're taking the streets, basically. Uh, they don't have their camps no more, so they're on the streets. Uh, mass shootings everywhere, um, riots, protests, people dying. Like I said, close to uh, around 600 to 400. Like I said, it now drops 200. Or, oh, there's a big explosion in Texas or something like that, just for, just for uh, an example. Like, they bring in, like, certain little pieces of, of news that happen here at home. That's very big news, but yet it gets overshadowed by all the stuff that happens overseas. Now, I'm not saying that the stuff that's happening in Egypt is something to be concerned about. I'm just saying watch both hands, okay? Because when the right hand is doing something, you know, the left hand can be doing something too. So we need to watch what's happening on both sides and not erupting all over Egypt and the Middle East in general. Um, I predict that there's going to be a lot more. Um, that's my personal opinion. But uh, it looks like it's starting with Egypt, and it's not looking good, guys. Um, the, the death toll amounts are ranging, like going from, you know, 400 to 600 to 200, um, 3,000 injured possibly. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood says that 600 have been killed. Um, uh, I've been watching videos and reading.